February 4th, 2015, Asina Paul Rigara was assassinated by President Paul Kagame's regime in Gachurido, the suburb of Kigali City in Rwanda. This was a murder staged as a car accident. Pictures of the collision were inconsistent with the grave injuries that Rigara sustained. Witnesses to the accident reported government police officials arriving at the scene, pulling Rigara out of the vehicle, beating and torturing him before placing him back into the vehicle. When his family arrived at the scene, Asina Paul Rigara was still breathing, but was in need of medical attention. Instead, the police officers began to prepare the body bag, knowing that he was still alive. His wife Adeline and daughter Anne pleaded with police for his rescue and treatment to no avail, until Adeline and Anne called the ambulance themselves in hope to find him treatment. The officers continued to refuse and instead drove him to the mortuary after wrapping the Sinapol Rigara in a body bag, alive. Soon following Rigara's assassination by Kagame's regime, the Rigara family received a letter signed by the city of Kigali mayor Fidel Daisaba, asking them to pay St. Joseph Engineering Company an equivalent of $10,000 as a fee to demolish their hotel located in Kiovu. After receiving this letter, the Rigara family made several attempts to meet with the authorities to resolve the discrepancy, but they were repeatedly turned down. They even went as far as to try for judicial processes, but were denied their legal right to even file the case. The authorities claimed the hotel was built without the proper permits and was structurally unsound, and the mayor confirmed these claims, stating that the building was in illegal construction and had serious safety issues. These, of course, were all lies fabricated by Kigali officials in justification of their unlawful actions. The family disputed the claims and provided copies of building permits to the mayor of Kigali, but of course, they were ignored and overruled. The hotel was thus demolished on September 12, 2015. To the public's surprise, the truth came to light on September 14, 2015. Just two days after the hotel's demolition, Diane Shimarugara, daughter of deceased Asina Parugara, released to the press copies of all of the documents and permits that the family had previously provided to the city prior to the demolition of the hotel. Some of the documents had even been approved and signed by the mayor himself back in October of 2012. As if this whole ordeal wasn't horrific enough, on July 14, 2015, Rwandan authorities had seized other plots of land totaling more than $2 million. They had also threatened to close and repossess several factories belonging to the family and dispossess them of all the land that their late father had worked so hard for. The battle between Rigara and the city over his assets started long before Rigara's killing. More recently, on May 3rd, 2017, Diana Shima Guigara announced her plans to run for president in the country's elections held August 4th, 2017. Her vow was to work towards eradicating poverty, establishing universal health insurance, restoring democracy in the nation, and championing free speech. After about two months, on July 7th, 2017, Renda's Electoral Commission disqualified three candidates, one of those being Diane, claiming she hadn't fulfilled requirements such as collecting enough supporting signatures. It was also alleged that she had forged some 30 signatures. According to Diane, she submitted 958 signatures with an additional 120 after some were disqualified. Paul Kagame, the country's president since the year 2000, went on to win the elections by a staggering 98.8%. Killings, disappearances, and unlawful incarcerations have been widely blamed on Paul Kagame and his regime, specifically anyone who dares to criticize his government in any way, all of those being the very drive behind Diane Rikara's candidacy. In what now has become a dictatorship, Paul Kagame has created a climate of fear and strict order in Rwanda and of its citizens. It is widespread knowledge that speaking out against the government in any way will force you into exile, have you incarcerated, or murdered. The people of Rwanda are closely monitored by Kagame's security services, 
Consequently, the public remains silent about injustices committed by Paul Kagame. Because neighbors, friends, and family are continually persecuted for speaking the truth about Kagame's regime, citizens remain uninvolved and complacent due to fear. Kagame has strict control of all media, allowing only what is approved by him to be reported and played for the public. To date, more than 60 journalists have been threatened, exiled, jailed, or killed after reporting the truth about Kagame's dictatorship and the suffering of Rwandans. Diane Rwigara and her family are the latest victims and are now going through the same fate. Diane, her sister Anne, and mother Adeline were taken for at least 16 hours of questioning every day, despite having no formal charges filed against them. They would be picked up daily, detained for hours with little to no food or water, and then returned home to conditions where they had been stripped of their money, their food, and ability to communicate with family and friends. When at home, they were under constant 24-hour surveillance and placed on lockdown, denying them the right to leave and come back freely. The practice of forced confinement by Kagame's regime had become daily life for the Rigara family. On September 23, 2017, Diane, Anne, and Adeline were not returned home as expected. They were arrested and now face imprisonment based on fraudulent charges fabricated by Kagame's regime in an ongoing effort to punish Diane Rigara. When Paul Kagame and his regime want to eliminate you, they make you appear as a criminal in any possible way.